Okay, now see it fills in the spot. We still have this overlapping on the bottom kind of thing going on. But if we go any higher, which we'll do just to show you for general purposes, see a 40 point is going to start cutting into the art. But 40 will hold. So now we've actually got a frame around the picture. So it fills in all those dead spots. And this is just the middle of the Milky Way in the middle here. That's just a downloaded picture from NASA. Now the key is, when you download these, you want to get a high resolution. Way back in 95, I was a chemistry major, not a computer major, and I was put up a website. And even the guys in the media center, the real computer nerds, are saying, it's 72 DPI, that's all the resolution the computer screen gives. But I found at 72 DPI, even a minimal loss in a the transmission, the picture was coming through pretty scraggly. So even when I have a picture on the web, just to save space, I at least do 100 dpi. And that way what happens is, if you download the picture that's on the screen, the printer will print it at a higher resolution. So then, you know, you're looking at a nice picture you see on the internet, this happens all the time, and you might have seen this too, somebody will do a presentation, and they'll take their graphics off the web, or they'll run it in the newspaper. That's where I see it. You know, they'll take their logo right off the internet, and then they'll print it in the newspaper, and it's lost so much resolution, you can't even see what the logo says. So if you at least put it in at 100 DPI, you can always print it at a higher thing, because it'll download it higher. So this, again, is just swirling galaxies and other assorted things. This is an early... I did of the, it's called codons, when you take your four nucleic acid bases that are coding for amino acids. I wanted to show the symmetry of where all the bases of, say, C, U, CCU, CCU, CCC, CCA, CCG, they all code for leucine, so it gets a bigger block. All the last bases code for proline. But now when they split up, the UC is code for histidine, the AG for glutamine. So you start seeing this thing that all, 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 and then doubles, 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 doubles. So what I try and show in art, since I'm a real artist, is I find symmetries, things that you can look at, and then you can compare them. So this is actually presented in a wheel. And I'm going to do this with the color wheel also. I'm going to open it up and spread it out and lay it flat. The wheel is kind of confusing because it just goes around, you know, it's only one way to look at it. So if you could look at this flattened, I call this the periodic table of amino acids. If you look at this flattened and then compare it to the wheel, then you can see that there's these smaller purines, pyramids, I still get them mixed up. We have two stop codons for that. We have one for the bigger adenine. On the wheel, it's, you know, kind of confusing. You look, and some of these are actually coding for the same amino acid. So we're going to go in and we're going to code that more. So this is what this looks like with the, what do you call it, space art behind it. We're just going to close that all together. And I guess we'll save it since it's got a nice pretty border on it. And what you can do now is print it to a PDF file and print. I used to lose it. Okay, this is what that table looks like now. We've got to scroll this out. It's sometimes it's fun just to go up. If I could reach farther, I'd do the shortcut. But we want to view the window. We want it all to fit in the window. And this is working slow for some reason. Okay, we'll just go to the magnifying glass and we'll do this manually. Okay, so learn these little shortcuts. So this, these are all these molecules that I'm drawing, and it's a new way. I guess I'll show you this here. That these are amino acids. Nobody draws the electrons. If you've been watching my show and you hear what the whole periodic table of the elements is about, when these atoms and elements bond together, it's the electrons. So when you have this thing here that's called a carboxylate. They'll draw it as a carboxylic acid, but in an aqueous water solution in the cell, it's protonated, so it's a carboxylate. These two oxygens are anions. They've lost a proton. 
So when you draw the electrons in, you see that this side of the whole molecule, negative electrons, it's even got an extra electron for negative, this is highly, highly negative. You've, whenever you've got an ammonia molecule, your nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons on it too. And you're going to see that this is where hydrogen bonding, uh, nuclear reactions, the catalysts in the enzymes are able to use this negative or where it's positive on an aldehyde of a carbon. See, something that's got a positive charge can drive in on this carbon. That's how the sugar gets uh, broken down, this enzyme. Anyway, that's on an aside. I know I'm talking too technical for some people. So there I'm drawing my amino acids. This is what our table is coming to look like, our periodic table of the amino acids. I gotta go to these little arrows down here to fit this in the window. So you just saw an earlier version of this with the space scenes around it. Now what I'm gonna do is, these are the bases, so uracil it shows what uracil looks like. The amino acids here, we're gonna end up putting down here so you can see what they're coding for. And then what I want to do is we'll put a transfer RNA, a B form of DNA. We'll put the ribosomal transfer RNAs and all these in there. And then we'll hang the little proteins above what they code for here. So you'll do it a look and you'll have them. So again, it'll have a table with a new design. This is something I've never seen. I've been browsing the internet and I have a couple different periodic table of amino acid designs that I'm doing. And we'll see if we'll play with the camera here. Get a little zoom up to get more of this in. So what this shows is your four nucleic acid bases, as they call them, and all your amino acids are coded from these. So your three codon nucleic acid base things, and I don't want to get too technical, can all be shown in an artistic way. You know, I want it to look cool. I want it to look fun. When you see a table, it's just letters or in the circle. You know, the periodic table of circles. So this is a new design that you'll see soon. We'll just close that all together. And let's see what this one was. Okay, this is where it's coming into. Again, I'm not an artist. I just look at things that aren't the way I think they should be taught. So the periodic table that I've been ranting and raving about... To teach chemistry, you need this thing here called the chart of the nuclides. This is all the elements that there are in nature pretty much here. This one goes up to bismuth. So as we'll see down here, I'm going to zoom in on where it all begins. The proton to neutron ratio, okay? When you talk about hydrogen, to a chemist, a hydrogen is a proton and an electron. So even if it's got an extra neutron, which they call deuterium here, or two neutrons, they call it tritium. This is a tritium bomb. The hydrogen bomb was using these different isotopes. They separate them, and you got an abundance of neutrons. I don't know if you can see my little things down here. So the neutrons are counted off on the bottom. The protons going up. So the next element over is helium, which has two protons. There's not as much helium-3 as there is helium-4, so I make the boxes bigger. Again, then it's a no-brainer. If you look, 99% of all the hydrogen you find in the world, the universe, here on Earth, is one proton, the red, and no neutrons. Helium, same way. This alpha particle is a way predominant theme, as you're going to see here. This was something I was just playing with shadows over here which I was looking at and I'm not going to change it because I can't remember why I did it but it might have been for a reason so when you start seeing these other elements here turn back off a little carbon 12 is the most abundant carbon that you find six protons six neutrons now this is purposely unshaded we took the opaqueness down because we didn't want to highlight that. Starting at fluorine, we're just going to skip through. These are simple things, but this is what this table is showing. Nine is the number of protons. Ten is the number of neutrons. There's only one isotope of fluorine. Now, see oxygen. It's really faint here. It's hard to see, I know. Oxygen 
16 is 8 protons, 8 